Hey everyone, okay, so um, for those who don't know me, I do a lot of update statuses on uh, my journey. Uh, I originally was a codeine addict for 14 years from the age of 15. So I started at a very young age, except I thought I didn't really start on codeine when I was 15. I started on neurofin and then I went on further to codeine because obviously my body got adjusted to um, neurofin and it wasn't helping the pain that I was getting any longer. So then I went higher. So the reason for my journey, so the reason for me being on codeine was because of my back and um, I get a lot of neck ache headaches, which I currently have a headache right now, funny enough. So, you know... I guess I didn't realize how much damage I had done to my neck. Even through my years of dancing, I've made it worse and worse and worse. And coming off coding, I finally, I realized how much pain I was actually in. But even going through the pain that I go through, you know, I do things more naturally, like exercising, stretching, the gym, chiropractor, massages, you know, but it's something I'm probably going to live with for the rest of my life, unfortunately. But I try to manage it and looking back at codeine yes it made it so much better i hardly noticed the pains that i get compared to now but no matter what it had done for me for that long i would never turn turn backwards and go back to codeine ever and trust me there's been days that i go you know what i've got a chronic headache my back is sore my neck is sore that's why you see me do this a lot because it's very stiff but I still would not go back to codeine. At the end of the day, for me, it was a bit more of a different story than some other people. So for me, um, you know, I'd never touched any heavy drugs and I never, I stopped drinking alcohol at 19 due to the fact that I just chose to. Um, alcohol was never something I enjoyed and I'm not a sheep, I'm a leader. So I led myself to something different and that was what I enjoyed was dancing. I love music. And I love socializing and talking and meeting people and traveling and, you know, all this other th other things, you know. And I remember people always saying to me, how do you go out without having a drink or something? I said, pretty easy, really. You go out, you dance, you enjoy the vibes, you enjoy the music that you're going to, you know, you, the people around you, you chat to people. You know, there is so much you could do without all that, you know. And, um... You know, I always led by example in that area. And the best part was when you're finishing up a night, when I would finish going out at 3, 4, something, 5, 6 in the morning, I haven't touched a bit of alcohol, I haven't taken anything else, and I can drive home. I can drive home to my bed. I don't have to wait out in the cold or the heat and wait for a taxi and those huge lines at the end of the night. I get to drive the car home to my bed, which is awesome. So, as I was saying about the codeine, um, sorry, I got a bit off track there. Uh, with the codeine, um, it really, I didn't think I ever realised how peaceful a lot of the time my sleep were. Um, I wouldn't have, I would dream, but I wouldn't dream as much as I do now. And I feel like my dreams are so much full on at the moment. It's like awakening the subconscious in me. You know, I numbed myself with codeine for 14 years. And, you know, your neutrons always zapping at you because they're saying, you know, when you're coming off codeine, zapping, going, you know, come on, come on, give me some more, give me some more. And that's where a lot of people do relapse. And look, I can understand why some people do relapse because I did a cold turkey and it was hard work. Must I admit, hardest thing I've ever done in my life. I would do birth times 10 um, than taking, coming off codeine ever again and opium. Yes, I love you. Sorry, my little boy is just looking up, smiling at me. He's so beautiful. Why don't you say hi to everyone? This is the little creation I've made. Say hello. Hi. <laughs> That's my son. He is the most beautiful little thing that I've ever created. So I feel very blessed that I have such an amazing little son. He's now seven months old too. So for me... Um, the codeine was definitely something I didn't realize I had an addiction to at all. And, um, what happened to me and how I came off it, like I said, it's a very complicated part of the story. 
it happened due to the fact that I had gone to Philippines with my partner and I had unfortunately got bad luck and got a parasite which made me very very sick um, I even had to go to a Philippine hospital, which their world countries, they are not good. And um, I didn't even think I could get on the plane the next day. Like, I was so scared because my partner was flying back the next day. and I was flying a bit after him. I'm laying there in the hotel crying and not being able to move and just feeling chronically ill in the stomach. And I just kept taking the antibiotics and the painkillers they were giving me. Um... And then pretty much I did eventually get to Perth and I just, oh my God, I just crashed because I was just so happy to be home. Um, but then I didn't realise at the time it was a parasite. I just knew there was something wrong with me. Um, three About two months later when I moved back to Melbourne to be with my partner, I realised then there was something to get checked out and that's how I knew I had a parasite. Anyway, so down the track I got sick, blah, blah, blah. And then um, I end up in hospital on and off two weeks with these chronic migraines, chronic migraines. I've never had something so bad in my life. Like it was so sore. And um, then also my stomach was unwell and I was sick because of the parasite. But then never did they once ask me in the hospital that I was at going in and out, must I add. First time was three nights, then it was one night and then it was five days. And um, never did they ask me, do you have any addictions? Do you take anything regularly that you rely on? Nothing, nothing they asked me. And they were feeding me panding fort, like a lot of milligrams. I think they were like, it was like 60 milligrams or something of panading fort in me trying to keep the pain of my headaches. But what it was doing was, cause not realizing that I was coming off coding, I had no idea I was wanting to throw up all the time. But they just thought that was part of what I was going through and they didn't know what was going on. I even got MRI scans, I got lung puncture, I got all these things and not, and like, you know, nothing came back with anything to be worried about apart from I've got a really bad, a bit of a bad disc in my, in my neck. Hence why I'm probably sore. Hello, baby boy, good boy. Yes, you are, you're a good boy. Um, and then um, from there, my I was so sick. Mom's like, well, I have to head back to Perth. So I was like... I, I couldn't even, I had to wear sunnies everywhere I went, everything killed me, I felt like I was out of space, it was horrible. Then we got back to Perth, I finally got there with mum for, um, after the plane trip, and then um, I stayed with my dad that, that weekend and I kept throwing up and feeling really crook and, and not sleeping at night time, but sleeping through the daytime, and my dad kind of like, I remember still sitting on his step, and he looked at me and said, Sorry, Bub's not well. Um, looked at me and said, Rach, we are all here to back you up, to help you get off this, um, to get, help you get through this, but you must want to do this for yourself. And it was so hard because I felt like anything I ate would come up. I couldn't sleep. I was depressed. I was so dark and it was horrible. I just didn't know what to do. We, My, my dad and his partner ended up taking me to the doctors and I was looking down like this. I couldn't even like say hi. I couldn't look at, look at the doctor. Nothing. It was so bad. So they got me on antidepressants um, to help me, obviously, to lift that up. But again, it takes up to at least a good six weeks, right? So, you know, four weeks you kind of get a bit of a, a feel of it. You start lifting up. But six weeks to eight weeks is really when they work. And um, pretty much then, when I went back to my mum's, we actually went down south to Margaret River where we met the most amazing doctor because what ha was happening was his mum stayed in my bed with me looking after me because I was really sick and every time there was a little movement like my, even my leg moved I would wake up every 10 minutes like mom said if you keep doing this you're going to kill yourself and I felt like death at the time honestly was going to be better than what I was going through but um, I proceeded to keep pushing through as much as I could and um, anyway so we went to the doctor and then we actually um yeah, so that's what we will... Sorry, I just got a message. It distracted me. Um, so that's when the doctor said, hey, she's actually coming off codeine. So here, take endotripoline, Take 5 to 10 milligrams. It will knock her out for a while, but then she'll start getting into the use of it and, you know, I will start sleeping better. And, um, yeah, it did knock me out for 20 hours. <laughs> um, but once I got used to it, it made me get back to sleep routine. It made me get back to normality which was so nice to have considering that I didn't get any sleep at all and I was just exhausted and oh, it was horrible.
the migraines were there for three months solid and literally what it felt like so i've seen a psychologist um who also deals with pain he was a pain a pain doctor and i felt like the headaches were coming up and it felt like my brain was on fire now if you say it to anyone else they look at you like probably thinking you're crazy right but and what was happening was my neutrons were zapping at me saying they want more codeine but i was like i wasn't giving it to them and eventually it was like the cloud was over me and then and then the headaches just kind of disappeared I'm always going to be kind of prone to headaches, but those were migraines. They were chronic. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I went through it. I went from 41 kilos up to um, within five months after coming off the codeine, I went up to 60 kilos, just working very hard in the gym, keeping myself healthy, keeping myself fit. And doing, I did a lot of, um, I did PA meetings to help me deal with my codeine addiction. Um, was that right? Good boy. Sorry, he wants to be part of the, the conversation here, don't you? Yes. Um, but yes, yeah, so I pretty much, I got help everywhere as much as I could, Psycholo psycholog psychologists, um, you know, I talked to people and, you know, I had a lot of support. And when you're coming off coding, support is crucial. Now, if you do not have family members to help you, like I had my family support me for four weeks straight, 24 7 i was pretty much a suicidal watch because i was so unwell really is that what you think of it all of it so yeah so pretty much if you don't and if you don't have the support around you because sadly some people don't um put yourself into um, a psych ward where they will help you come off the codeine now I had kind of no choice in the matter. I had did it cold turkey and it's hardcore, but at least when it's done, it's done. But if you don't want to jump in like that, you know, wee yourself off it, take it a little bit by a little bit, you know. I mean, Mark has got plenty of information on that area. I don't know because I just did it cold turkey and just, you know, ripped the band-aid off and did it. And then um, once I started getting a lot better, um, I started work again and you know I um I went back to Perth though because when I was coming off the protein my grandfather was very sick and he ended up um, passing on so that was really hard at the time too dealing with all that plus your brother dumping a load of um, feelings and what he feels onto you which was really really hard too considering you know it was from like 10 12 years ago um, I'm a big believer in not holding on to the past. You must move forward and must focus on the now because if you don't focus on the now, you don't. You'll miss out on a lot in life. Um, that's where I actually found my mentor and his name is Lee Bundy. Lee Bundy is the most amazing mentor I've ever found and he is the one that kind of, sorry for my language, but kind of, um, kind of pulled my head out of my ass if I was going to be honest and really um, helped me to strive for better. Hey Jack, oh thank you, I appreciate the words. Um, and he really supported me and helped me and he's still my mentor to this day. And I've jumped and leaped over so many obstacle courses, it's not even funny. Um, I'm about to do a retreat over in Bali to really life transform myself and become that higher, higher purpose of, of my life and higher person and be the better mother that I can be, to be the best mother I can be, as well as partner and friend and daughter and all that jazz. And it is six hard full days in Bali and it is absolutely amazing. I would highly recommend if you are through the hardest stages of coding that this route, this um, retreat would be absolutely phenomenal for you. Like in life, you know, we need to sometimes invest in ourselves and sacrifice to get the results and the desired outcome that we are looking for. And that's where I'm at now. And you know, I'm so lucky that I've got a beautiful son that's absolutely been amazing. Um, and I'm very blessed in that way because he is seriously a very, very beautiful boy. Sometimes I think he looks after me. Um, then I look after him some days. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, no, everything has been turning out much better. I mean, I had a look at postnatal depression when he was five and a half weeks old. I ended up in hospital for three weeks. You know, um, I'm back on medication because postnatal depression is, you know, a very much imbalance in the chemical in the brain. And, you know, what's one tablet that makes you feel better? And if it helps you be a better mother to focus on your little one, then, you know, there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, also, I work on my self-love as well. You know, I had to... 
um, come to terms that I'm a mother and that freedom of traveling and that in my life is now no longer the same. It's not, not going to happen, but it's not the same. And that's okay. You know, we had to adapt into our new um, living situations. And being a mother was a big change for me. Something I wanted, but something that I don't think anyone really truly tells you what it's like until it happens. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I've, I've come from this to this, you know, from um, traveling the world and then getting sick in the Philippines, coming home, then, you know, going through all the hospital stages and then coming off the codeine and then, you know, four weeks of hell pretty much. And then, you know, after that was still battles and still trial runs, but I got through it and I never once had a relapse. I am a type of person, once I find a, find what's wrong with me, I find the solution. I don't whinge about it, don't make excuses, I get on with it. And I fought through the, I fought through the battle of Crodeen and I won. And I'm so proud of myself because I tell you what, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. Like I said, I would do birth 10 times more than I'd ever have to come off Crodeen ever again. So if you are having trouble coming off Crodeen guys, or you're not believing in yourself stop the self-sabotaging start loving yourself start going you know what this is going to be hard this is going to be um i'm going to feel crap but you're going to get through it eventually you know what i mean know that there is light at the tunnel it is a hard tunnel to get through but once you're there my gosh it's nice to see the sunshine again um that's how i felt anyhow so you know if you guys ever have any questions feel free to come talk to me um, I'm very passionate about helping others, but only if they want to help themselves. You know, they say that the saying that most people will know was, you know, you can take a horse to the water, but you can't force the horse to drink the water. With humans, you can give humans information, but it's them that has to, to work to get the results. So, um, yeah, if anyone else has anything to ask me or want to talk to me, feel free to contact me and I'm more than happy to, um, you know, give advice or tell some things that work for me. Um, not everyone has such chronic, um, full-on stories, but hey, I'm the type of person, I'm all in or all that kind of girl. So hey, I was all in and then I came out and I won. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just want to say thank you all so much uh, for watching my live and listening to me. Hopefully if there's anything I've said, to, said today that is connected with you, um, maybe you can take something away from this and maybe you don't, but that's all right. Like I said, if you're looking for a mentor, you're looking for someone to help you in the right direction, because obviously our way didn't work because we were going down the codeine addiction side, you know, um, having a mentor like myself with Lee Bundy is absolutely amazing and the support I've had from him is phenomenal. So if you're ready to invest in yourself, you want to become that better person in yourself or better father, better mother, better friend, daughter, partner, whatever, this is the time to do it. There's nothing better than the now, than the presence. Jake, what are you doing? I'm going to bring him up so you guys can all see him. This is my wee man. Say hi, everyone. So anyway, um, I hope you all have a really amazing day. And, you know, follow your dreams and, dreams and goals. You know, create what you want and focus on the goals to make your desired outcome true. So thank you all so much for today. <laughs> my beautiful little boy. So thank you so much, have a lovely day, take care of yourselves and we'll talk soon and bye for now.